What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel for subscribers, and welcome to the to the channel for people who are not subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon, and that way you can be notified of when we release these videos. And also when we have the live streams, live streams are one of the best parts about this channel. So I hope that you will accept my invitation to uh, to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also, thank you to everybody that supports the channel on Super Chat, Venmo, and Patreon. And I mean that with all my heart. You guys really do support, and I thank you very, very much for uh, for for watching. And you also support just watching the videos. I know I put the ads in the videos, but you know that's how we raise the funds to help uh, with what we're trying to help with. Now that said, I'm excited. Yes, yes, yes. I am excited about tonight. Errol Spence Jr. is fighting Carlos Ocampo in Texas. And I have to be honest here. I don't foresee this being a barn. Uh, I, I see it being a spectacular bout, but I don't see it being something where there is just a tremendous amount of uh, of competition. This is not a boxer that Errol Spence Jr. picked himself. And it is a mandatory that was ordered by the IBF. Uh, and by the way, people that asked wanted to know why Ugas, who's the number one contender at the IBF, was not selected for this bout. The fact is that at the time that this order that this bout was ordered, I believe the order was released on January 23rd. Ugas was number 14 in the IBF, and that was before uh, he had fought Ray Robinson. After he fought Ray Robinson, I believe that was in the first or second week of February. Then he was elevated in the number one position in the IBF. Carlos Ocampo was uh, moved to number two, but the bout between Carlos Ocampo and Errol Smith Jr. had already been ordered. So there you go. That's that little bit of stuff. But let me tell you why I'm so excited about it. So excited about it because this is a chance for Errol Spence Jr. to shine in front of his hometown uh, fan base and also uh, to do it all by himself. When you can sell out 14,000 tickets in in Dallas, Texas, and you don't need you don't have a major uh, or, you know, a majorly known competitor in the ring with you. That's saying something about the support that he's having. And, and if people don't know who are from the United States, Texas, I do believe, is the second uh, this is this. It might actually be the largest geographically, but it is one of the biggest states. And uh, Dallas is one of the top five or six uh, cities, size cities in the United States. So that is a it is a, a treasure trove of boxing fans down there uh, to support uh, Errol Spence Jr. and boxing matches that take place in that in that area. So it's really exciting for that. And also because so many people put on they, you know, this whole A side conversation, right? Like the tape that it was made popular uh, by Floyd Mayweather Jr. and his negotiations uh, with boxing uh, with other people saying, hey, I'm the A side. I get to pred I get to do what I want to do, all that type of stuff. So when you have somebody like Errol Spence, whose name is growing and who is who is showing he's he has good ratings on on Showtime. Uh, he's going to have he's going to pack a stadium at. In Texas, that just that's another step forward to increasing the momentum behind his name. And when you have that type of momentum behind your name, then it makes it easier for bouts for more competitive bouts and the bouts that we really, really want to see to be made where people just can't, you know, people can't duck, can't duck out on them. You know what I mean? So now you have a scenario where but the thing that I want to talk about now outside of the Ocampo bout, well, is I'm loving the way that Errol Spence Jr. is talking. Not only is he starting to he is he he's he seems to me to be growing into his role. I listened to the interviews that he gave to a variety of people after the weigh in for this bout. And you can hear in the, his tone and his voice that that in that uh, that a bit that amount of aggression that he has in the ring is starting to show itself in the verbiage that he uses in dis, in conversations with the media about himself in the welterweight division and how he's proclaiming himself as being the man in the welterweight division, saying that I'm the best. I'm the most feared at 147. I'm the top dog. I like that, man, because so many people are really quick to um to anoint 
other boxers as being the top of a division that they just came to. Now, I'm loving Terrence Crawford. When I talk about this, it's like I've got I feel it is necessary for me to say how much I like Terrence Crawford. I was just watching uh, some fights and you can check it out on the community tab. I just did something on the called the black some boxers that were taking place. Uh, welterweights and middleweights in the 1940s. I was watching Charlie Burley. I was watching the head movement of Charlie Burley against, I can't remember the name of the guy I was watching Charlie Burley uh, face off against, but you could just see how just his movement, he looked a lot like Roy Jones, but I couldn't help but be reminded of uh, Terrence Crawford and what as well with his, you know, with his head movement, uh, the, his, his stance. Now Terrence Crawford, I know they say is orthodox. Charlie Burley, I mean, it, you know, was a switch hitter. Uh, Charlie um, Burley was more of a, you know, was a orthodox boxer, but just really, really reminded me of him. And I was thinking to myself, man, this guy, you know, because Charlie Burley is one of these champions in the 1950s, that 40s and 50s, fought at welterweight and fought at middleweight and never really got a chance uh, to, you know, to show what he can do. But he beat some of the greatest boxers in, of his time, or which, which were in much higher weight classes than he was. But his skill was just, man, his skill was awesome. And if you guys haven't had a chance to watch Char- Charlie Burley, you should you should take a couple minutes. You know, go to get on YouTube, look at Charlie Burley, watch how this guy, uh, how he handles himself in the ring, and you tell me that you don't think this guy today would be given a, would be beating the brakes off of ninety nine point nine percent of these boxers that are that are that are getting in the ring today. The dude was just exceptional, and he reminded me of Terrence Crawford. Um, but I'm loving the way. But you know, there are more. There's one more than one way to skin a cat, and Errol Spence Jr. has a style that I love. I love the I love the fact that he goes to the body. I love his jab. I love the fact that he goes to the body. He's a the southpaw that tears up the body. He stays in tremendous physical uh, condition. He's strong. Uh, I just really like how I really love how this dude is, is is fighting. And now to have him start showing that type of personality on top of it, I think is a great thing. So let me go through this article and you maybe you can get a, a sense of what I'm talking about. Errol Spence Jr. wants wanted to defend his IBF crown back home in Texas as soon as possible after taking the title away from Kelbrook in the Englishman's hometown a year ago. And also I'm going to put a pin on that in this in this Kelbrook uh, conversations because some people made some conversations, some statements that I want to I want to clarify about Kel Brook. The 2012 U.S. Olympian gets that chance Saturday night against Mexico's Carlos Ocampo in a mandatory defense between two undefeated boxers. Spence's second bout as a head as a champion will be the first title bout in the 12,000 seat football stadium that's an indoor practice field for the Dallas Cowboys at the team's headquarters 30 miles north of Dallas. Spence 23 and 0 with 20 KOs won the first defense of his 140 pound division in the 140 pound division against Lamont Peterson in January in New York. That bout was stopped in the eighth round, Spence's 10th straight knockout. Ocampo, 20, 20 and 0 with 13 KOs, fighting professionally outside of his home country for the first time, is largely an an afterthought amid the talks of Spence taking on other welterweight champions. Keith Thurman holds two titles and Terrence Crawford just took the WBO crown from Jeff Horn earlier, nearly a year after Horn beat Manny Pacquiao. This is the second of what the 28 year old Spence figures will be three bouts in 2018. It also, it's also his first as a co-promoter with the new company man down promote promotions. Another reason that putting on a show is at least part of the storyline while Spence tries to keep the focus on winning first. The task at hand is how I handle the pressure. I've got a tough opponent prepared to take my title in front of my hometown fans, and I'm not going to let that happen. I won't let him upset me in front of my hometown fans. I'm going to put on a great show and a great performance like you always see, Spence said. Definitely, this has been bigger than I expected. I get a little bit nervous when they say I'm um, 
fighting in front of 14,000 plus fans, but I have the support of my home state of De- of Texas and Dallas and I love it. And what and does he want to send and excuse me, and does he want to send to the other top welterweights, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, and Terrence Crawford? I've been sending messages I don't send I don't have to send anymore. I'm the best welterweight in the division and I'm the most feared welterweight in the division. So they have to send a message to me since I'm the top dog. Hey, and I like that. And I agree with that. I think he is the top dog. Uh I can't say that it's Terrence Crawford has a belt. He beat Jeff Horn. I don't think that Jeff Horn I think Jeff Horn is a good boxer, uh, but, you know, he's probably a lo- – he, you know, he has one good win. Other that He won one good upset against Manny Pacquiao, an older Manny Pacquiao. So we all know what, we all know what Jeff Horn is about. But Terrence Crawford did it in spectac- – he did it in spectacular fashion. I think Jeff Horn – I mean, excuse me. I think Terrence Crawford is rightfully considered the number one pound-for-pound boxer in the world. Because that title to me, I, and I agree with Andre Ward, where Andre Ward was like, you know, his attitude is pretty much like, what does this guy got to do to be number one pound for pound boxer in the world? Right. I mean, it's the number of it's the amount of time that you've been facing top competition and winning. I mean, it has to be Terrence Crawford belts at 135 belts at 104 belts at 140. Now a title at 147. I mean, you know, who else is doing that? Who else? Nobody else in boxing has done that. There's, I mean, there's a good argument for Vasil Lomachenko that people make, and Vasil Lomachenko, uh, I think that it's interesting because it's like they use the exact opposite logic and say, you know, how quickly he did it. Now, I don't think that Vasil Lomachenko should be considered pound for pound, or definitely not over Terrence Crawford, um, because I really think that he just had, he have number one, he has one loss against Orlando Salido, and I think he just had his first Real test besides Orlando Salido and Jorge Linares at 135. And he got put down in that bout. So, you know, just for me, but I would definitely have Lomachenko in my top three because I do think he's that I think he's that high level of boxer. I would favor him over Gervonta Davis. I favor him over, um, you know, I think he's going to have a just a one of the bouts that I would like to see more than any is. Lomachenko versus the winner of Robert Easter versus uh, Robert Easter versus Mikey Garcia. And uh, if he was able to get those guys in, maybe he could talk about being pound for pound over over Terrence Crawford. But at this point, I really don't think that there's I don't really think that there's an, you know, t- should be too much of a conversation about that. Now, Terrence Crawford also is starting to be built up more by ESPN. It seems as if they, you know, want to put their resources behind arrows behind Terrence Crawford. And if that's true, Terrence Crawford, my understanding is going to be back on like October 13th. And that bout might actually be on ABC. Now, if that bout's on AS, on ABC, then that's something that, you know, was happened would then have happened for both Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, where they've been on regular TV and allow people to to see him. So I think that that would be absolutely ter- absolutely terrific so all in all man i'm just and like i said man i'm i'm looking at guy i'm looking at legends like charlie burley and i'm like man okay yeah i can see this a small guy that can a small guy that can do his thing might very well be able to whoop up on a bigger guy that's not as skilled so hey you know i got a lot of respect for him um but like i said that's uh, Charlie Burley had to do it at middleweight several times against some major dudes like Archie Moore. I mean, God, dog, this dude be. I think Archie Moore might be one of the greatest light heavyweights ever. I know he got a piece later in life. He, I mean, later on when he's older, he got a. Uh, and this is a young Archie Moore. He beat. He only had sixty. He only had sixty bouts at that time. You know, he had he fought. He had good bouts with Ezra Charles. I think he lost to Ezra Charles. But in the other guys on like Burt Light, uh, Lightell and, um, yeah, man. I mean, dude, just. He really did it over a lot of years. So Aaron Wade, guys like that. I really think that that is, you know, that says a lot about Terrence Crawford that I can look at what this dude is doing. And the bout that I was watching was one in like 46 
you know, so it was it's something was further along in this guy's career. So anyway, man, and both honestly, man, they're both about the same size. Charlie Burley, I think, is like five nine, seventy five inch reach. So he's about the same size as Terrence Crawford. So he definitely has a bit. I mean, the he would definitely has the the potential of doing of beating a guy like Errol Spence. But what he said, he's now he's also Terrence Crawford is starting to feed into it a little bit by I think kind of you know is it sneak dissing him a little bit. With uh, the talking about Carlos Ocampo, he, how he saw Carlos Ocampo on YouTube, and he's like, you know, <laughs> basically, oh, what do he say? Uh, Errol Spence goes for the K-I-L-L, right? So it was like, yeah, man. But, you know, hey, man, this is a mandatory fight. This is not about that he picked. And, you know, for a guy that's been trying to get with the best guys in boxing in 147 pounds, you know, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to, to I'm looking forward to tonight. It's not his it's not his fault that he's fight that he's doing that. If Keith Thurman would have manned up and got with him last year when he was when he was healthier the year before last or whenever the last time that he was healthy and gave him a shot, uh Keith uh Errol Spence right now would probably be the WBC. He would probably I mean he'd probably right now be the WBA heavyweight champion of the world. But hey man, Keith Thurman didn't want it. He had to go to the IBF route. You know, he had to go over, he had to get it the hard way. And this is the point that I wanted to make about um about Kell Brook. I listened to somebody make a video about Kell Brook and saying that a win over Kell Brook really doesn't put you in the position of being considered like a pound for pound type of guy. And then compared uh Kell Brook's record to I think it was Panamarev. <laughs> So I went back and I looked at the record and I was like, wow, man, Ponda, there's little things in the records that you can see. Like when I look at somebody's record of the guys that they're that they faced, I look at the guys that they faced and I tend to look at the last five guys they that they fought before they before they fought them. Right. So if you guys if you're facing a guy who's 26 and, you know, 26 and four, what did his last five bouts look like? If he's 26 and four, but he got knocked out the fight before last <laughs> and and uh, the other three were unanimous, were split decision wins over guys that also have who, who have terrible records. Yeah, he got the win. But where he where was he at the time? Where were they in their career at that time? Right. So I think with Kell Brook, you definitely have a situation where earlier in his early in his career. Like a lot of UK boxers, he they fight a lot of real terrible mismatches. I mean, guys, they have, I mean they have guys in the UK that are journeymen that get a lot of I mean, got dog guys with hundreds of losses, you know, which just means that they have that they they have a lot of ring experience, right? But they have a lot of ring experience, but there's also a lot of bouts to be made where they're filling in and they're getting fights and they're losing them and so that's not unusual for guys in the UK to have guys like that on their record early on. And Kell Brook definitely has that. But when you look at Kell Brook having wins over, I mean, he has wins over Carson. He has wins over Carson Jones. When you have wins over Car- Car- uh, Carson Jones um, and you have wins over uh, Sean Porter, I mean, the fact that he beat Sean Porter, that's I mean, you don't need 15 people. You don't need 15 other people, you know, lower level boxers on your right on your record. If you've beaten Sean Porter, it tell that says something right there. If somebody comes, if Terrence Crawford comes in and beats um, or say there's a young guy that hasn't had a lot of fights like Anthony Joshua. Right. Anthony Joshua didn't have a, a lot of high quality boxers on his record, but he comes and he beats Terrence Crawford. That means something. So Kell Brook to me duh, is a standout win for Ter- for Errol Spence Jr. and he beat Lamont Peterson. But this this bout clearly is not on that level. But I'm hoping to see, and I, but I'm again, and I know I'm going on a little bit this about this. I really am happy to see that this guy's attitude and his like his the, his verbal aggression is starting to pick up. I'm glad to see that Terrence Crawford is starting to try to egg it on a little bit. Now I'm really hoping as much as I kind of get on. Uh, Keith Thurman, I'm really hoping this dude gets healthy, comes back out there, and we can get one time back. Because if we had one time back and we had a winner of uh, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, we got Errol Spence, we got T- Terrence Crawford. I mean, man, that is a, 
That is one heck of a tournament, man. That's one heck of an of an informal tournament. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm really hoping that that can I'm hoping that that can take place. I'm looking forward to tonight. And with that, I'm out. Peace.